Thank you for downloading this podcast from the British Theatre Guide. For more information about British Theatre Guide, please visit britishtheatreguide.info. I'm Steve Orme, the Midlands editor of the British Theatre Guide. The next production in the main house at Derby Theatre is Jim Cartwright's play set in a pub in the north of England, Two. The original production concept is by Sarah Brigham, who is the theatre's artistic director, and it's directed by Julia Thomas. It's a two-hander, and the cast comprises Joe Mosley and Derbyshire-based Sean McKenzie. He's a big fan of Jim Cartwright and explains what it is about the playwright's work that excites him. When I was a, a, a young man, when I went to uh, drama school in the 19, 1990, uh, I grew up on a council estate and, and then suddenly I found myself one day going to RADA. So I was very conscientious of my kind of... I thought everybody was going to be posh, I thought everybody was going to, you know, be rich. And, and Jim, very luckily at that time, I found a copy of Road. And um, I don't know why, but I just really connected with it. Funnily enough, I never actually saw the production, but everybody talked about it. It was just before my time. And anyway, I read Road. And then whilst I was at RADA and fell in love with it, I learnt a couple of speeches from it. Rise and Fall at the National started at the theatre. And we got tickets, and I was at the very first preview of Rise and Fall, a little voice of the National. Uh, so, so I was there the same night as Jim, you know, and he was as nervous as hell. And I saw him earlier on in the year up in Scarborough, and we, we had a chat about it. And seeing that production that night just kind of changed me. That you know those ca- great characters of Mary and Little Voice and the Phone Man and and Ray Say, and I really recognised that world. Really recognised that world. So it really connected with me, and it I just laughed out loud all night long. But and then cried my heart out as well. It was just so moving. So yeah, I've always been a massive fan of Jim's work and this play. Never seen a production of this, but always wanted to do it. And now I'm incredibly lucky to be doing it with Joe, who's amazing. And, yeah, I feel very privileged, very privileged. I just did, played Ray Say, so I've had to wait 25 years to play him. But that's fine. I can wait. And that was great. That was a really great experience doing that. And Jim was, um, he was, he was very nice with his advice, really. He, he said, he's a kind of just, um, <laughs> don't worry too much about, you know, holding it up as a golden chalice. He said, you've got to do it how you think you must do it kind of thing. And he was lovely anyway. So, yes, I'm here now. I feel... So, yeah, he's three... I suppose, in many ways, his three main plays have all connected at different moments of my life. So, uh, yeah, it's great. So how does two compare with Little Boys? <laughs> totally different play. Totally. I mean, it's just... Because this is the thing that kind of frustrates me a little bit about how Little Voice got billed as th- this comedy. And that's not Jim. Jim never called it a comedy. And two's not a comedy. I mean, it's funny, but it's funny because it's real. And there's just so much other stuff in it. But in this place, this this play particularly, has that wonderful theatrical nature of there's only two characters in it playing all these different characters. And, and Joe said yesterday, he said he, he's almost like a love letter to to the theatre, stolen Joe's <laughs> the now, but <laughs> but but she's right, and it, it it is. It's it's Jim saying, you know, kind of, um, you know, there you go, be theatrical, do it, enjoy it, and um, and have fun, I guess, because it is beautiful play. It's very, it is very funny in parts, but I would say it's a lot grittier and more moving in parts as well. But then little voices. So, but I think that's Jim. He's got a perfect blend of human life. You know, one minute you're up, one minute you're down, I guess. Why do you think two isn't performed a lot these days? It's strange, actually, because I, I always expect to see it a lot more on people's seasons, especially with it being a two-hander, because, obviously, it's more affordable for theatres to do. But I think it's the the technical kind of side of it, the theatrical side of it. Because I know the original production, as far as I know, they didn't have many props, many... It was it, Everything was kind of invisible, so maybe people stay away from it from that reason. I don't know, but I can't honestly say, but in this production, we have got a bar, but some of the world's real and some of the world's invisible. So there will be real money, there will be real customers, there will be invisible customers, there will be invisible money. There'll be real beer, there'll be invisible beer. So we're kind of mixing the worlds a little bit. 
and it's a massive technical feat, I think. And Tech Week next week is going to be really interesting to see where all that lands and where all that lies. But it's hugely exciting, and I, I really think, I honestly, honestly think people are going to love it. And I, I, and I think it's a great play. I really think it's a very great play for all those reasons. You're playing six different characters. Yeah. What sort of challenges does that uh, present? Uh, honestly, <laughs> uh, one, remembering all the lines. <laughs> Very honestly, more seriously, uh, who each of those individuals are, what they bring when they bring when they come into a scene, the energy, how they walk, how they talk, how they sit, how they stand, who they're connecting with, why they're connecting them with them in that way. There is so much to think about. I, it literally, it's like a Rubik's Cube for the brain, this play. It really, really is. The, the wheels keep turning on the thing and you're trying to match things up and slot things in. And, and we're slowly but surely getting there, but it's a real challenge for an actor, but it's, it's a real technical feat as well for so many different reasons. But that's the challenge of it and that's the enjoyment of it, you know. He's trying to be all these different people. Because some days you find you can get into character really well and really quickly, and then halfway through the scene you might be going like, well, that sounds like the landlord now. Like I had a bit of yesterday, and you kind of drift in and out. So, you know, we open in about ten days' time, and we've got on our, our eye and all that, and it's a challenge, but we're getting there. And that's part and parcel of the job, being all those different people. But it's really enjoyable as well. <laughs> so at this stage of the rehearsal... Have you managed to get into what Jim Cartwright intended for the characters in this play? I think so, yeah, I think so. And uh, and sometimes you, you really do connect, and sometimes I felt a million miles away. You know, I felt like on shifting sands, I've really, really struggled at moments. And then, But even in the moments where you struggle, you might find a little something that can really go, oh, that's brilliant, well, that'll help me with this, or that'll help me with that. And it's just finding stuff all the time. And I suppose the momentum of this being a theatrical piece as well, those quick changes and stepping in and out of character, uh, I think they'll inform us, obviously, and the audience will really inform us once we open, I think, of kind of, you know, where we step on the gas, where we pull off, how we feel about this, how that, you know, they respond to this or respond to that. But I suppose the thing is, you've just got to change like a light going on and off each time you step into those characters or step back out of them. Because the landlord and the landlady run all the way through. So you've kind of got a through line with them, but it's stepping out of them into this other person, stepping back into them, but also stepping into where they are in their story as well. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's slightly shifting sands, but it's really enjoyable. But I think we're getting a hang on it, I really, really do. With it being a two-hander, you've got to have chemistry with uh, your co-performer. So, yeah. how are you getting on with Joe? She's amazing, and I, and I don't say that lightly. She really is amazing. I've only met her literally two weeks ago, but heard a lot about her um, from various people that we both work with. And uh, yeah, she's been great. You're a Derby actor, so it must be good for you to come back to Derby Theatre after. Quite a yeah, break. the last time I was here was seven years ago, I think. 2011, I think so. Christmas 2010, 11. Played Toadie in Wind in the Willows, which was great fun, really, really great fun. And I had the time in my life doing that, but I first worked here in 96 with Robin Herford, who Joe's just about to go and work with mm. after, after two. So, um, yeah, that's this business. You, you meet people and you, you come and go. That's where I'm at, Heidi. All these years ago. She looks delighted about that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, I have a real fondness for Derby Theatre from the moment I came here. And Sarah's asked me to come back and do a couple of things. And, and rather selfishly, I went off and did other things. But, yeah, I do love Derby Theatre. And Sarah's really got the theatre back where it used to be, for definite, I feel. Uh, so all credit to her and everybody who works in that building. And it's just a great space to work in. I love the amphitheatre style of the theatre. I really, really do. I've just done another job designed by the same man who designed Derby Theatre, funnily enough, and it's just such a great space to work in. And uh, the staff are great. And, yeah, so I'm really delighted to be back, delighted to be back. And 
this is a massive challenge. Am I scared? Yes. <laughs> will it be awesome? Yeah, I think it will. Since Wind in the Willows, you've had uh, a couple of quite long engagements. Yeah. Warhorse and the Curious Incident, incident of the, the dog, dog in the, the Night Time. Yeah. So what's it like having that stability behind you? It's great. I mean, in terms of money, it's, it's you know, it's, for any actor being self-employed, you want a constant source of income. In terms of family life, it's a bit difficult because you spend a lot of time away from home. But you either work or you don't work in this business. And sometimes with great jobs like that, you, you can't turn them down, really. You don't have much choice, really. You have to take jobs like that because they're few and far between sometimes. So, yeah, I feel very lucky and very privileged and I've worked quite a lot of the National Theatre over the years and but it's not about that for me necessarily it's always about the play I'm doing really and that's why you know when this came up I was so delighted Sarah asked me to do it so and I feel very privileged and very lucky to be doing it. War Horse is touring again yeah I understand you turned down the chance to, to be in it. For yeah a... I could have done it again uh, but I did 520 performances of it uh, uh, over an 18 month tour which took in Ireland and Edinburgh and South Africa and so yeah I think once you've done it 520 times that's you've kind of done your bit I think and I did Curious I did about 320 shows of Curious so uh, yeah I think I've served me time national service you could call that I guess <laughs> I spoke to you a few years ago when you said that uh, your life had been a series of happy accidents. Yeah. So is that still the case? Yeah, it is. I think that's what it is. You, this business is mad and funny, and I think surviving it is, as a job in actor, is amazing. If you're fortunate enough to win the, the lottery ticket of fame, that's something else entirely. But for me, I've never been interested in that, have I? It's always been about the work and, and just giving really giving the audience a great time because I think we forget sometimes you, you can get so kind of wrapped up in yourself a little bit like I do you know and the audience really are the most important people because if it wasn't for them there'd be nobody to perform it to so yeah and what's next for you after two there's a possibility I might be going back to Scarborough to Eggbourne's theatre uh, to do the 39 steps but I don't no, yet we're kind of deciding at the minute so we'll see we'll see what happens but uh, the uncertainty that, that doesn't bother you now yeah it always bothers me it's always there in the back of your mind it's something you can't get away from I don't know this business can change so quickly as well you know I might be thinking about doing that and something else might come up so it's hard to say really you live day by day really and it's very difficult sometimes but I'm lucky I have a good family and I think I'm fairly sorted in respects of the business and how it works and, you know, how you deal with those things. But, yeah, I don't like not working, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but I've been very lucky, really. I, I left, will it be 25 years this summer since I left RADA? And I've had a pretty good run at it. So, yeah, very lucky. Joe Mosley, you're back in Derby for the first time in the three years when you did Brast Off, so does the theatre have special memories for you? Yeah, it does. Apart from, before I talk about that job, I work, I, before Brast Off I did a show called Horrible Histories, Horrible Christmas, so I did a Christmas show and that was the first time I'd performed on that stage and Sean's just said earlier, it's, I think it's the, one of the most incredible auditoriums I've performed in just because it feels... At first, when I went on stage, it felt so wide and I think capacity is like 525, something like that. So it's a big theatre. But being on that stage, it feels... The audience, it's so intimate and you can really... It's just designed beautifully. You can really feel what the audience are feeling. You have a really strong connection. It's not one of those auditoriums where you feel miles away from the audience. And So, yeah, so I was so happy to come back and do Brast Off, which was just one of the most incredible jobs because I think, well, partly because of the timing that Sarah chose, she couldn't have chosen a better time to do it just as Corbyn fever was kind of, you know, and it was it's about, Brast Off's about the working man and, you know, overcoming all that. It's about humans, it's about all the things that Brast Off's about. And we had the incredible support from local brass band 
who we all got on marvellously with. The cast just got on brilliantly. We had some children. We had three teams because I was playing Sandra, so I've got to have four children. So every there were three teams. So every like almost every night, I'd have like a different four children to play with, and it really felt like it involved the community. And yeah, I'm really proud of it. Bastard. You mentioned horrible histories there. You did multiple roles in that. Yeah. You did the same when you did Coronation Street on stage. Yeah. So has that prepared you for being in two? I thought it would have. And I thought I was, you know, I've done a lot of multi-rolling. But kind of no, because there's so much in two. And with Horrible Histories was kind of, it's quite cartoonic and pantomimic. And you can get away with very funny you can get away with doing a funny voice or doing something physically that's really bold you've got these fantastic costumes so it's kind of it's really about entertaining and it's about informing and coronation street was about you know i had to find the truth in those characters but i also had to sound like hilda rogdon and ina sharples and deirdre barlow to convince the audience that i was them and we had full wigs i had deirdre's glasses i had ina's coat and a hairnet so and i had a I had a starting point, which was not an impersonation, but I had something to start me off and then run with. With two, if you just do that, it doesn't feel right because these people are really real people. So what's been happening as we've been digging through the text? What you think you might be playing or what, like, I have to play an old lady. I'm not an old lady. I'm, like, coming in going... Oh, can I have a bag? I'm not doing that now. But at first, your first reading is, oh, I'll have a bag to lock, you know, I'll just do a little old lady speech like this. But then you kind of go, that doesn't feel real. What is her place in the pub? What do I want the audience to feel about her? And it has to come from more from you. So we were talking yesterday about how we go between the characters and Julia said, you know, that moment off stage, maybe you just need to come back to Joe and go, how is this old lady different from me? Or when I play a younger character, how is Maudie different from Joe? So you kind of always have to go back to neutral gear and into a character that we've actually spent three weeks creating ourselves. So I, in a really roundabout way, I suppose what I'm saying is all of these characters have to come from a part of me, otherwise they're not honest. And it's been mind-blowingly difficult <laughs> and we're still finding things out we open in 10 days so but it's also really exciting and you know some days I'm like I just want to run away I'm going to go back to Leeds I'm just going to get on a train I can't do it but then other days you go yeah I've really I've really got hold of it and that's part of the excitement you kind of it's good to be a bit frightened and I know that when we smash it we'll smash it but we're still on the road to that at the moment, but it's also the joy of... And so fulfilling to get a script where you can create characters. They're not already created for you in a way. You know, we're not fitting into anyone's, any a designer's idea of what this character is. We've been given free reign, with, and the wonderful Ali Allen, who's designing it, and Tim in wardrobe have kind of gone, well, they're letting us create the characters before they costume us, which is really rare. But, you know, I kind of feel like I'm going back to school. I'm going back to drama school. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so what's your impression of Jim Cartwright as a writer? He's a genius. He's an absolute genius. I found him when I went to youth theatre. And I think I haven't got a grand theatrical sort of story about him. I think probably as a young person... You know, my family aren't theatrical, so we'd sit and watch Brookside and we'd sit and watch Corrie and that was our drama in our house. And I think I remember seeing two at Bolton Octagon, I think where it premiered. And, you know, I did go to the theatre with school and I'd see Shakespeare and, you know, other plays that were very... Maybe old, older play, you know, from times gone by, where it felt really, OK, that's what acting is. And I think the first time I saw... Two was the first play I saw, and I thought, God, they're act that's like teleacting because it was so real. It w wasn't like it was being 
shouted at me from the sit. You know, <laughs> but it was like it, I really, really felt the grit and the warmth and the humour and the the absolute ups and downs of life. And I recognised these characters, so that's kind of it was a bit like telly acting for me. And I went, that's wow, they can do that in theatre as well. I want to, I want to be that truthful. I want to do that. I want to make people cry and laugh. That's kind of, and I think that's what Cartwright does. I think he's genuinely studied people and he's just, he writes them perfectly. So how are you getting on with Sean? Great. <laughs> Thank goodness for sure. We've got to keep going. We've got each other. We've got each other. Yeah, yeah it's, um, he's brilliant and he's so generous and we're both in the same boat. Sometimes we look at each other and we're like, ah, oh. but we're, yeah, he's great and it's, yeah, we, we'll be great and It'll be, look at me sounding really... Yeah, we'll be great, we will be great. We will be great. We will be great. <laughs> we'll be great. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he's made it really easy. After two, will everything be a bit of an anticlimax for you? I think rather than anticlimax, I might... I'm hoping, if we get it right, I might, my acting muscle will be so well exercised that I'll be like, come on, I can do anything now. I can do anything after this. So I hope it won't be too much of an anticlimax. I hope I'll go and fly on to other things with more confidence and more belief. And have you got anything lined up after two? Yeah. I finish two on the Saturday and I start rehearsals the next Monday for Relatively Speaking, which is an Akebourne play at Old Coliseum, directed by Robin Herford. So she's a completely different character. There's nothing northern about her. She's from the home counties, so I'll just make that switch really quickly and go into something fun. No, I'm going to say fun. Two is fun, but, you know, it's going to be a, a completely different play to this. So I'll take what I've learnt from this into that. Two will be performed at Derby Theatre from the 2nd until the 24th of March. You've been listening to a podcast from British Theatre Guide. For more information, please visit britishtheatreguide.info.